This hand is better than the last hand. I'm a fan of this one. Uh, we're gonna make it 25. Quarter. All right. We immediately pick up aces. So I'm gonna, gonna, gonna go for a pretty big three bet here. Harping polarized range. Raise. One, ten. I'm gonna probably be playing somewhat tight during this game since I am most likely to be possibly not even winning in the game. It's a very tough game, so I'm not gonna be getting too out of line, especially not with hands like this. Not gonna be good enough. Uh, probably just play a four better fold range here versus Chin. And I would probably need something like ace, queen plus, nines plus. So this is a spot uh, with Jesse opening and Shin three betting that um, I think I have a hand that's close to being able to continue here, but uh, this combination offsuit I think is just slightly too weak. I can't really call, and I'm not uh, going to want to start four betting here because of how likely it is that I'm dominated if I'm called. Um, if I was suited, I think that. Uh, with this stack depth, it would be fairly reasonable to continue either by calling or for betting, but I'm going to fold this one. All right, so first of all, I'd like to make it clear when I said this hand is good and the last hand wasn't. We did some practice hands, just so everybody knows. Um, second of all, uh, I guess strategy-wise, uh, this is a spot where I think Christian should be probably not calling very often or at all uh, with tough players behind him. Um, I think it's just early enough position that he doesn't really want to have a flatting range, or if he does, it should be pretty small. He should be three betting a lot. I'd expect him to have a bunch of different pocket pairs, maybe some mix of all the pocket pairs, and uh, stuff like ace-10 suited plus, most of the suited Broadway is maybe like king-queen offsuit or something like that. Um, my particular hand uh, definitely plays as a mix, at least for me, but most of the time I should just be calling with it, and I'm going to do that this time. Um, I don't have any particular thoughts on him three-betting me the very first hand out of the gates, but I feel like I don't think he's trying to like take advantage of the fact that we're, you know, playing, uh, that we're just starting out, and I might be a little gun-shy and not four-bet him too much or anything like that. I don't, I don't think he, you know, would try that on me, maybe somebody a little less experienced. Anyways, I'm going to call. I'm gonna check here, because that's what I do on this board every single time, I think, or basically every single time. All right. Aces with the ace of spade here on this texture is going to begin with a catch-all size, somewhere in the vicinity of 60%, charging a lot of his like queen-jack hands, uh, jack-x hands, and then we're gonna introduce a turn over bet so the pretty natural formation for me here is to begin somewhere in the 50 to 60% range. So I three bet to 110. We're gonna be seeing a very natural, somewhere in the $100 range. And then we're gonna go for some turnover bets. Obviously a card like a queen, a king, something like that, or a low card would be very favorable for the turnover bet. Uh, something in the middling portion of the range like a seven, a nine would not necessarily introduce those hands. Uh, those uh, sizes. Stop looking at me, bro. <laughs> uh, so we'll see what kind of uh, reaction he's going to have to that kind of a sizing. So we're going to go uh, 125 on the flop. One and a quarter. Um, this isn't a board that I'd expect him to just 
automatically continuation bet with every hand that he has. Um, he might be using that strategy, but I don't, I don't think it's the best strategy to be using on this particular board, and I don't think it'd be the best strategy versus a player like me. Um, maybe I'm overestimating myself, but I would think you'd need a somewhat weak player to just continuation bet with every, every hand. Um, so I think he's checking back some hands, like if he has like king-queen offsuit without a spade, I think he's gonna probably check it back, but I could be wrong. Um, my hand is far too good to fold, so I'm definitely gonna call. Uh, I'm just debating giving him a nipple pinch before I do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's make the call. Also, I'd be calling here with like, basically everything that I continue with at this stack depth, I think. Uh, I might have a small raising range that includes some sets and possibly two pair, but I only have two combos of two pair. And uh, I would also raise like some semi bluffs and some stuff that's low enough equity that I feel like I need to raise it and not just call. So that's actually the type of card that I probably need to be leading on. Um, if I have a flush draw, it just got there. If I have a 10, it rates to be the best hand a lot of the time. And if I have a pocket pair that was ahead, it's still ahead. The reason why it's so good for my range is because when Christian bets, he can have a lot of like bluffs and semi bluffs and stuff. But when I call, I specifically have hands that connect with the board. And now it's very difficult for any of those hands to not be stronger on that turn um, or not be like, you know, a hand that's doing pretty well versus range that includes some semi bluffs or just like straight like low equity hands. Um, that said, like his low equity hands are mostly things that have a spade in them, like, you know, ace queen with the, with a spade or king queen with a spade or something like that. So, um, it's not like the greatest card in the world, but I do think that it's a card that I can lead on some percentage of the time. And I think I'm going to lead pretty small to deny equity to any sort of like continuation bets that he might have that just aren't doing that well. So like. Let's say he has something like queen jack with no spade. I'm, I'm just gonna try to deny equity to that hand. It, it can't really continue because it's just drawing dead or close to dead way too often. Um, I think I'm gonna go with something like a quarter pot bet. So uh, the pot is 485. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go with like 125. All right, this is a very natural lead. Uh, I expected a lead on this card from Jesse a lot of the time. My hand now is going to be ranking as a two street bluff catcher at this point. I think that at some frequency, I can actually raise this turn. However, Jesse has significant range advantage now with his queen tens, king tens, and jack ten suitors, as well as some houses, as well as out of position is going to have an advantage on flush hands since most of their race call uh, formation will be suited and I will have a disadvantage on the suited uh, variety of our range. So this is a situation where my hand now is a very natural call call. Uh, I expect this to be a down bet over bet line a high frequency of the time. However, my hand is a little bit too high up. I'm going to be blocking ace, ace 10 of diamonds and uh, Jesse should just be barreling like queen jack, jack nine, uh, some king queen of hearts, king jack of hearts formations here as well. So this is just gonna be a hand where I have to call call a high frequency of the time. And if Jesse does let go of the gas here on the river, we're going to get kind of thin. I don't necessarily think there's many cards on the river where I can fold, um, but I do expect this to be down bet over bet a fair portion of the time on the river. Uh, and we will just react to that as it comes. So that's a pretty interesting run out. Um, I definitely think my hand rates to be one of the worst hands that sees this river. I guess I could have something like uh, ace eight suited, which I have a few combos of. Um, but honestly, I don't really ever, I don't think I peel with that hand very often pre-flop. I mostly just four better fold that hand. So um, something like pocket nines is probably one of the worst hands I'm gonna arrive at the river with. And 
I think I want to be betting some of my big spades, so I think that I also want to be betting with this hand. Um, I'd actually like to like go back and look at this later because I, I could certainly be wrong. Um, and I don't know, leading that turn card is actually, um, with my particular hand, is, is quite close as well, but it did seem like a hand that needs protection and I can lead a lot there. Um, anyways, I think that this is a pretty clear hand that I need to be bluffing with on this river. Um, and I guess the portion of his range that I'm targeting is something like jacks plus without a spade in it. So I think that um, those hands are gonna have a lot of difficulty calling something like somewhere between like two thirds and three quarters of the pot. So um, with the pot being like seven, I think 700, um, I don't think that I can go particularly large and I don't think I really need to because I don't have that many bluffs in my range. Um, but I do think that this is probably one of the better hands to be bluffing with. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to debate my size. I think, I think maybe like 60% of pot is actually fine. So I'm gonna go with 450. Okay, so this is just a matter of like how often I can induce something here. Uh, so we look at pot size. Uh, given he did not polarize, I think that what we can do is kind of introduce some min range to induce. I think that at some frequency he might turn some hand, like he might he might be calling with like hands like queen x like queen jack, queen of spades, uh, something like that. Uh, so I think that the natural play here is for us to be just calling a lot, but I think that Jesse's good enough to rebluff some hands. So I think that it's kind of thin, but I'm just kind of gonna go for it here. I think that, yeah, we do lose to some houses, but they're kind of rare. Uh, eights and deuces, uh, I think more often than not, I think he'll just be capable of turning some hands that are 10x combinations into a rebluff. Maybe he'll call with some hands like jacks with the jack of spades, uh, things like that. Uh, so I think it's okay for us to just kind of go for it here. If we run into a house in the first hand, then it's just gonna be a long season and that's fine. So I'm gonna raise here 10 to 900. Okay, that's a really weird size. Um, I like pretty obviously have to fold this hand, but I'm not really sure what he's doing with the size unless he has something like, I mean, it's just like really, really difficult for him to have uh, hands that want to bluff here. Um, unless he just decided to float turn with like queen jack without a spade or something. Um, I would assume that his bluffs want to try to get me to fold some hand that has a spade in it, um, which means he probably wants to go considerably bigger. But th this size actually makes me like kind of want to call, not with this hand, but like some other hand that could actually possibly win. Um, I don't know, it made me very curious, but I, I mean, I'm just not gonna call with this hand, so. Uh, pocket nines here, we're gonna wanna come in for a raise. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty easy raise defend situation. Uh, so we're gonna wanna be mostly coming in for a standard three, 3.5X uh, spot. Uh, depending on how I wanna be constructing as it pertains to having much of a limping range, etc. cetera. Uh, I think I wanna mostly introduce a raising range against Hunt. Uh, I'm not too concerned with constructing too many limps here as of now. Uh, so we're gonna go in for the $30 raise. So Chin's opening from the small blind here to 3X. I think that this hand is one that I definitely can't fold. It can be played either as a call or as a three bet. And I think it's gonna function slightly better as a call here just because I keep all the hands in Chin's range that I dominate 
I don't fold anything out that is dominating me regardless. I don't fold out any ace jack, any, uh, any king queen, anything like that if I three bet. So I think keeping those hands in is, is slightly better, keeping those weaker hands in. And also I expect him to be relatively well prepared to come back at me with some four bets here. And I definitely don't think this hand is gonna function very well if I did get four bet. So it just seems to play very naturally as part of my calling range. Nine five four is mostly going to be favoring hunt here at a high frequency. I still want to begin with a bet. I believe not much of his range is going to fold on this kind of a texture. He has a lot of natural floats. He has hands like jack 10 of spades, hands like, you know, anything wrapping around the six, the seven. So most of his range is actually going to continue here. He has very low uh, fold to C bet frequency. Because of that, I want to introduce pretty much a sizing that allows for that to happen. I don't necessarily want to bet pot and then blow those hands off. So I want to introduce something like a catch all sizing, then potentially on certain turns, introduce uh, some, some big bets pending the card that comes down. I expect a small uh, frequency of flop raise versus C bet. Uh, this is a good texture for him to attack on. Uh, he has a lot of natural options to take that to take that line with. Effectively, his call to C bet and raise to C bet are going to be intertwined. So I expect to see those both same hands, both in a calling range and a raising range. I expect some of his raising range also to be hands like 5x and 4x. Uh, so I'm going to choose a catch all sizing, something like 35. So Chin bets 35 on this 954 rainbow board. It is a very neutral board. It's a texture that isn't going to necessarily give anyone a specific advantage given that we're both dealing with very wide ranges at this point. I have no backdoor in this situation, which is less than ideal. If I had a backdoor, I might even be able to raise. But I think that given that I have king high, two overs, and some backdoor straight draws, I think that it's a pretty good candidate for a continue. I think it's too high up in my range for me to really think about folding it. And I think that continuing through a call makes the most sense. So I'm gonna call. So this board naturally hits, this card naturally hits uh, hunts ability to float. So a lot of King Jack, Queen Jack, Jack 10 hands have hit. Uh, I also think that a lot of his like call versus raise preflop will contain these kind of cards. Hands like Queen 10, hands like, uh, you know, King Jack, Jack 10, etc. A lot of the range distribution that contains fours and fives will often be folding. Um, so hands like king four off, king five off, etc. probably folding at some frequency. Therefore, I think we could begin sizing up on this turn. I also want to size up with some of my own queen tens, uh, some of my own backdoor diamonds. So I think I want to introduce pretty large sizing here. Uh, probably something in the vicinity of like pot to 1.1x pot. Uh, I think that the reason I want to go pot is because I think he is going to be forced to call with his those exact hands. But if I if I bet like 1.1 and he has like or 1.25 etc. and he has a draw, now he might have some some reason to fold. So I want to go closer to pot, and then when he calls, uh, we're going to introduce some like really big river bets. So the pot is now 130. So we're gonna bet 130. So Chin bets 130 here, which is I think exactly pot. So it's an interesting spot given that 
This is a card that I think is expected to interact with my float range pretty substantially. I obviously have too strong of a hand to fold. It's a little bit problematic that I block some of Chin's potential bluffs here, like the King Tens, King Queens, that type of stuff, but I don't block any diamonds. I don't block six, seven. I don't block eight, seven. I don't block ace three or ace deuce. So it seems to play pretty naturally as a call. And I think that on a lot of rivers, I'm gonna be calling again, depending on what the river actually is. Obviously I would be calling again on any jack or king. I would be calling again, a queen would be kind of awkward. Um, a diamond would be a little awkward, an ace would be annoying. Um, yeah, there's a lot of rivers I'm calling, but I, I definitely think that my hand is strong enough to call the turn and we'll see what happens on the river. This is now a card that all draws have bricked. I have a lot of available bluffs, therefore, I could introduce like pretty massive sizing here. Uh, if we do catch him with the Jack X region of his range, he just has a pretty natural call. I also think that some of his 5X of diamonds, etc., could find some hero calls as well. Uh, so his range is gonna be pretty much split in two ways. It's going to be either a draw that missed or just a bluff catcher. Therefore, I think we just try to max out against this bluff catcher region um, and just bet like something like 1.75x pot, uh, potentially even. The fact that like I have all over pairs that can also take this line and I block the nine leans me more towards choosing the smaller of the over bet options uh, because I blocked the nine. So if I didn't block the nine and I had say like queens, kings, aces, then or like fives, then I would choose like the massive over bit. But because I blocked the nine, um, which is gonna be one of his natural bluff catchers, I'm gonna choose the smaller of the over bets. So I'm gonna choose around 455. So Chin makes a slight overbet here. This is an interesting spot to overbet since it is a card that to some extent I guess helps my range, but I'm not really perceived to have a lot of 4x that's calling twice here, so I can understand the overbet. In terms of what Chin's wrapping here, his range, I'm just gonna break down his range combo by combo. He's got one combo of quad fours, three combos of fives full, three combos of nines full, one combo of jacks full. So that's eight combos. He's got 18 combos, sorry, he's got 12 combos of queens and aces. He's got three combos of kings. So he's got 15 more combos there. That's 23 combos. Then he's got some jack nine, of which there I believe is six combos left. So uh, he might have some ace jack as well. So we're probably looking at a total of something like 40 combos, maybe in his value betting range, like maximum. And against a slight overbet, I need him to have something like 22, 23 combos of bluffs here. And I think when you add up all of the potential ace, ace three, ace deuce, the six, seven, seven, eight, the king queens, the queen tens, some of the diamonds, I think there's enough combos left in his range that can bluff this spot that I can call with this hand profitably. I think that calling all my bluff catchers here is kind of hard to pull off, but it may be a spot where I'm incentivized to do that just because of how wide the ranges are. So I suppose I'm concluding from that that Chin might be slightly over bluffing this spot, but at the same time, I think that it's not completely out of the question that he could also value bet the hand like Queen Jack uh, going for value from a nine here. So um, I think that calling here with uh, King Jack is gonna make sense. Wow. Chin on the river went with a, uh, a large bet sizing, but not like a, a massive bet sizing. He went with a slight over bet. And what he said was that he had to go with that sizing because when he has nines full specifically, it's harder for me to have a nine, which means it's harder for me to have a bluff catching type hand. So he has to go smaller. But in actuality, the more I think about this hand, the more I feel like 
the way it works out is that uh, when, when he blocks the nine hands that I have, when he blocks a nine, he actually makes it slightly more likely that I'm going to have a hand like jack-10, king-jack, queen-jack that called the flop and then turned a jack. Um, and if I don't have those hands, I have a, uh, like a hand that turned a diamond draw and then called or a hand that turned a straight draw and called. And now I have nothing on the river and I'm not going to, to really pay him off anyway. So I actually, thinking about it, I, I think that if you ran that hand through a solver, it would probably tell Chin that he's supposed to bet even bigger on the river than he did. He bet like 450 or something into like 375. But I think that if, if he had bet like 800, I probably still would have called. Looking back at it, I think checking is a really good option just simply because if he, because I have all the nines, he doesn't have a nine, which is the most likely hand to check back, which means his range is going to be pretty polarized to having a jack or having a draw, both of which likely bet when checked to, unless he has the discipline to check his jack on the river. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure he would do that. So he might have been able to get more out of me than he did there. And similarly, if he checked the river, I probably would have bet. And then if he, if, he che if, I, if he checks and I bet like 200, 250, and then he raises to like 800, I might still pay him off there as well. So checking becomes, I think, even a superior option to betting. Uh, so I think the options are either check or you choose the small overbet with exactly 9-9 nine, nine, or you choose a massive overbet with like aces. Uh, so I think those are the three options. Um, if I had to do it again, I probably would choose the check option just simply because I think that blocking all the nines makes him have things that are going to bet. Ace two's off. Not quite good enough from here. So just to fold. Best part, the best you got you to protect your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a clear button Cheater. open here. Um, my anticipation is that uh, you know Jesse's going to play rather linearly from the small, so I expect him to be three betting um, pretty much expanded value. Uh, I suppose that there. Is an opportunity for him to start like getting a little wider with offsuit ace x um but i don't think it's gonna be too much so i'm just gonna choose a standard open here to 40 and expect chin to be defending yeah i mean i'm not gonna play this hand i feel like berkey said some stuff last hand when he made his three bet about like i gotta set the tone or something like that before he made his three bet and i found that funny um Perky is uh, definitely going to attack the table though, and I feel like that's gonna be a dynamic that we're gonna have going on. Um, and that'll make a much more like fun experience when we all battle in a little bit. All right, so as a general strategy, what will often happen here is I expect Perky to be sizing up here uh, rather often. Most of his raises are gonna be coming in in the vicinity of 40 and 50. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna to have to truncate my range in terms of flatting, and I'm going to be three betting more than I would be calling. However, when he sizes to 40 here at this stack depth, jack-10 offsuit functions very naturally as a call. And what's gonna happen here is we're going to be leading a fair amount of boards against Berkey's wide uh, big, uh, button range. Uh, but as a general strategy moving forward, when it folds around to Berkey, we're often going to be three betting more than calling, assuming he chooses the $40 to $50 range. If he chooses the $30 range, then we're going to be mostly calling. So this is gonna be a very natural call, and we'll see how the boards play out moving forward. All right, so this is a situation where if the board was closer to 986, uh, I would be leading more often. However, I think on this kind of a board, uh, we're running rather neutral. So I'm going to let Berkey uh, continue with the aggression here. Uh, so rather often here, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna be check calling and looking to lead some turns like a jack, a 10, a seven, an eight, potentially even a six. Uh, I can't necessarily lead this kind of a board, even though that was my intention and I did flop pretty well. However, I think that here we have to be checking uh, because of the presence of the four of spade rather than like the six of spade, so to speak. Check. 
Okay. Uh, so this board texture in particular is a little bit uh, on the tricky side. Uh, the very standard play here is to just check back and simplify your flop strategies. However, what I find is that by taking a, a pretty robust check back strategy here, you really complicate turns and rivers. Um, we actually have a pretty good candidate to triple off. Uh, so we have two overs and a gut shot with the Queen of Diamonds, which is going to allow us to be barreling on a pretty wide array of turn cards. And um, assuming that the board texture remains favorable to us by the end, uh, we can potentially triple off. Now, due to the dynamic nature of this texture, when we do choose to bet, it's just somewhat polarizing in nature. Um, therefore, we're just by default going to have to size up a little. I wouldn't exactly have a lot of bluffs here, um, so I, I do kind of have one of the better hands, particularly I block his combo draws, uh, like Queen-10 of Diamonds, Queen-Jack of Diamonds. Um, I do open up 9x of spades and 8x of spades because I have the 10 of clubs instead of the 10 of spades, but uh, basically what we can expect here is when check raises come through, they are going to be incredibly pulled and we're going to be able to defend through a call. When we do improve turns, we're going to be able to be all in a lot. Um, when he chooses to just check call, he's going to have marginal showdown value and uh, some amount of robust equity. So there are a lot of continues, 6, 7, Jack 10, Diamonds, etc. So uh, this pot will really be won on the turn or river depending on runouts. Um, that said, I'm going to choose about a 60% pot sizing. So uh, there's 85 in the pot. Um, we are going to bet 50. <clears throat> All right, versus 50 is a very natural size here. I think he wants to choose a catch-all size here on this kind of a board. This is very similar to the formation of 10-8 earlier versus me versus Sylvia. This is a situation where ranges are going to be running rather symmetrical. Now, if I have the Jack of Diamonds, which I think I do, I want to be check-raising this sometimes. So. I have the 10 of diamonds, which is actually even better. Uh, I want to be check raising this sometimes. Uh, so how I want to do this is, I think I want to check raise here roughly 30% of the time versus Berkey. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my phone, and if the, the last number is a, one, a zero, a one, or a two, then I'm going to check raise. If it's not, then I'm going to check call. All right, it's a two. So we're going to check raise here uh, this time. So we're going to be looking at uh, 175 check raise. 175. Okay, so I'm not too shocked to see this check raise come through. As I said, there are some hands you could be doing this with. We'll be looking at hands like 10-7 of diamonds, jack-10 of diamonds, 6-7 uh, of diamonds, and some nut flush draws. Um, some of those hands are going to 3-bet pre for sure. Um, made hands, he's going to have 9-8, maybe a couple combinations of 9, 4, 8, 4 suited, but very few, and then obviously sets. Uh, the sizing that he's choosing kind of tells me that we're gonna be looking much more at a hand that is trying to push through to the turn and then make a big polarizing size on the turn. So we're gonna be looking more at the combo draws and then hands like, um, you know, queen 10 of spades, uh, seven five of spades, six five of spades, uh, whatever the case may be. So effectively on a spade turn that's not a queen 10 or jack, or seven I guess, I will pretty much have to fold to a second barrel, but we're gonna be fighting pretty hard on a turn, queen 10 or jack, um, and any diamond. These are gonna be uh, cards where if he chooses to pull out, we're gonna be able to kind of just shove through and put him to a real decision. All right, uh, four of hearts here is probably one of the worst cards that could have ripped off the deck. Uh, I think our hand is going to fall into a very natural check. I don't think Berkey has any bet calls that fold this turn. However, Berkey's still gonna be pretty worried about me having hands like nine eight, nines full, uh, four X of diamonds uh, that might be going for a double check raise. So I think that our hand now functions as a very natural check and we're gonna be deciding on sizes uh, on this turn. I think some frequency of the time we can also be going for a double check raise here. 
uh, blocking some of Berkey's best bluff catchers like Jackson Tents. Uh, however, Berkey's really sticky. He might bet call. He might. I don't think he's gonna bet uh, hands like Ace High on the turn too often. Uh, so, if he bets, I think he's gonna be repping pretty pulled here. However, I think Berkey's like kind of capable of shit. So like. I think if he does choose to bet here, I think sometimes I will be check raising. Um, however, I think that we're gonna have to see if she if he chooses like a more merge sizing or not. I think that, however, I don't think we can ever bet this turn. Uh, I think we're just gonna be checking range on this turn pretty much every time. However, the good thing is I think that Berkey knows I'm capable of check raising nine X's. Uh, so I think that I'm somewhat protected on this turn pretty much every time. So this is a pretty easy check. Okay, so um, when he checks his turn, this is a really good event for us. Uh, he's gonna be just landed with a bunch of give ups that my hand is actually probably beating right now. Um, but if it's not, we do have to set up a line that could potentially get an eight or a nine to fold. Uh, I do think he has some 4x of diamonds, but not very much, and the times that he does have it, he should be following through on this turn for sure. Uh, he only has one combination of 9-4 suited, one combination of 8-4 suited, and I would wager damn near zero of pocket 9s, pocket 8s. Uh, and then there's one combo of quads, obviously. So we just have to be willing to kind of pay off those really strong hands and be forced to run this bluff through uh, and expect him to just be holding hands like 6-7, backdoor spades, things along those lines, maybe even some ace highs. So we are going to, again, elect to choose about 60% pot, and then we are gonna overbet river if check to. Um, if he follows through with a second check raise, I will just be folding. I'm trying to figure out if there's any merit to three betting, but I don't think that I could bet three bet my sets or full houses. They'd probably just be resigned to calling again and bluff catching or not bluff catching, but setting them up for river all-in spots. Um, so we're looking at about 4.30 in the pot. So I'm gonna bet 260, 250. 250. All right, uh, facing 250 here. I think that our hand Definitely does not want to fold yet. I think that we have a little bit too much equity, uh, having two overs to the nine, as well as a diamond. I think our hand definitely does not want to fold just yet. However, I think that what we want to decide is, do we want to check raise again or check call? I think that I don't want to check raise again, just simply because I don't think Berkey's just, I don't think he's going to believe it. I think that he's already going to think I'm pretty wide here. I think our hands just has to check call again. We just have a pretty, pretty good amount of equity here. Uh, I think on some river nines, uh, I think we want to lead, and as well as like maybe some like. Actually, I think that's like the only card I would probably lead. Everything else is going to be a pretty natural bluff catcher. Uh, so I think our hand has a little bit too much equity uh, to be folding at this point. River Jack uh, is going to be a very natural check call now. I think that I expect Berkey to be overbetting a fair amount of the time here. However, I don't think that we can do much but check call. Uh, I think some percent of the time we can block lead this river, but I think it's pretty transparent. Uh, I think that what we want to do is pretty much just check and understand that an overbet is going to come in uh, sometimes, and we're just kind of forced to check call with this kind of a combo. Our hand is a little bit too good now. Um, the negative part about that is that our hand is pretty transparent in having a lot of Jack-X combos in range. Uh, however, I think that it kind of doesn't matter, especially against a player like Berkey. I think we're kind of forced to check call, and that's going to be the plan here. Check. Okay. Uh, this is a very fortunate river, obviously. Um, so let's examine this from Chin's situation. Obviously now, as he carries through the turn, he either has a total give up or he has a bluff catcher. 
his bluff catchers are going to be 9x, 8x, or he could have reverted jack. Uh, my intention, assuming I didn't improve to a pair, was to be all in on this river. Um, I felt like it would be very difficult for him to be able to call off with a one pair holding such as a nine or an eight, and most everything else would just miss and fold. I obviously do have some four X of diamonds in my range. I don't need to be three betting those hands on the flop. I could also just have a hand like ace four with the ace of diamonds, in which case I would have floated too. So when I do improve to uh, the nut straight on the end, I'm not gonna have a lot of combinations of hands that could be shoving. Um, so we're looking at about two and a half X pot. And since I was planning to run this bluff through for two and a half X pot, I think uh, having queen 10 in this situation is a pretty good balancing hand from a value side to also just push through and put his bluff catchers to a tough decision. Effectively, uh, I'm pretty confident that I could bet something in the neighborhood of like half pot and get called at a high frequency. But if I get called at two X pot, roughly a third of the time, I'm just gonna be making more money. So um, I don't really need to be as accurate with my assumptions. I just need to be able to protect my bluffs. All in? Players all in. Having the 10 of diamonds is a pretty negative event now. If I had to say like jack 10 of spades, it's kind of a, well, I don't, I can't have jack 10 of spades because the jack of spades. So. Let's say I had like jack of dime, I wouldn't even check race. Uh, this is kind of a close spot. I'm trying to see how many other combinations of hands I could potentially have here that are better than my hand. Uh, say a combo like Jack nine would be significantly better here. Uh, I obviously have four X of diamonds as well uh, in my range that might potentially check raise to check. Um, this is kind of close. I think I have to call Berkey here sometimes. Uh, probably, probably like literally with this combo, maybe like 20% of the time I should call Berkey here. Um, just because of how high up I am in my range. I think I'm gonna end up just having to pay this off. I, I don't really see how I can land on this river and now fold. Having the 10 of diamonds is extremely poor. He obviously has all of the over pairs in range. Some percent of the time though, Berkey might three bet the flop with those kind of combos. So this is kind of a close spot. I mean, this is just like extremely close. Uh, I think I'm gonna end up having to pay this off. Call. Call. Call? Yeah. Come on, man. 25, 65. <laughs> Denied the fist bounce? 